All right, so we've got expired Ar article hunter all set up. Um, and now it's time to check out some of the settings and see what we can do here. So um, first off, you can set an article limit if you only want a certain amount to be scraped. Leaving this at zero, we'll scrape as many as there are available. Minimum content word count is pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is the minimum amount of words an article or content must have for um, expired article hunter to pull it in. Uh, number of threads to use. This is how many threads obviously the software is going to use when scraping, how many pages it's going to load at a time. Um, for faster computers, you can set this you know, as high as you want. I would uh, probably leave it around 15, 10 to 15 on average. Uh, you don't really need much more than that. Software's pretty quick. Um, random scraping delay. This is just to give um, the archive uh, Wayback Machine a little bit of a break. We can set some delays here in between scraping so we're not hammering their server. Um, so you can set that to whatever you want. Default and minimum is one to two seconds delay. Uh, article formatting. This is where we're going to decide whether or not we want to scrape in plain text or if we want to scrape it in the entire HTML formatting of the original article. Uh, this is the default and that's where I recommend you leave it. Um, a lot of times images will be broken and there's nothing really we can do about that. So if you're getting a lot of content with broken images you can just deselect that. Uh, I always have include links off. This will strip if uh, in the article there's any external links. It will strip all those out. That way you're not leaking to, you know, a, an old site that might check or you know a competitor site or something on accident so it's probably best just to leave the, that setting uh, unticked. Um, HTML tags to strip. Here you can enter pretty much any tag you want to have removed if you're you know not liking a certain tag that's showing up in your articles and you just want to get rid of different stuff you can put it here so all divs are removed. Uh, there's some weird stuff that comes up in a site tag uh, you can remove uh, like tables, any any HTML tag. Um, when we scrape articles, the uh, the f the amount of words can be included in the file that's downloaded. Um, each article that we scrape is always downloaded as a text file, so you can include the the word count in that text file's title just to make it a little more clear what you're dealing with. Um, if you want the archive URL where the, the article was found included, you can check that. Um, article editor, that makes the difference between using um, a plain text file to edit your articles or our built-in HTML editor. I would use, leave this checked unless you're scraping in plain text. Um, open grid links on click. When we have article, articles populated here, um, sometimes you might not, you know, you might get tired of clicking it and it popping up, so you can disable, you can disable that. Okay, copy skate settings. Um, you're obviously seeing my key right now. I'm just going to change that later, so don't uh, don't bother trying. Um, here's where you can enter your Copyscape information. Obviously, to find your Copyscape API information, you just want to want to click on that link and log into your account. Um, so your username and API key need to be entered there. Uh, there are some advanced Copyscape settings that we can use here. If you want to transfer um, article files that have passed Copyscape to a different folder, you know, for example, like a past folder, you can select that. I don't usually use that. Um, if an article fails Copyscape check, you can just immediately de delete it from the uh, excuse me, delete it from the uh, article grid here never see it again um, and you can show a copies escape results pop-up window so once you check how many articles um, it'll pop up with whatever results whether anything was found or not um, the article grid also changes color to green or red if uh, you don't have this selected so you know whether or not it passed uh, WordPress settings. This is where you can add any WordPress sites that you have. You can add as many as you want. Um, so what you would do is just simply click here, give you, give your uh, WordPress site a name. Uh, so we'll call this test. You want to enter your login information, admin, password, and then your XML RPC URL. This is always just going to be your domain slash XML RPC 
www.php. You do need to have the HTTP in there and you need to not have www. there. So simply just put in your domain name right there. So just like that, simple, okay? And then you're gonna wanna click add. Um, and like I said, you can add as many WordPress sites as you like and we'll keep track of those for you. Great for PBNs. Uh, proxies are actually no longer needed in the software whatsoever. Um, so you don't have to worry about this at all. If you still wanna play it safe, we've left the option in there for you, but I would recommend not. Just kinda of slow you down and it's pointless. If you do notice some kind of uh, delays or bans, which we've never seen, uh, then you can pop in some proxies here and see if it works better for you. The link bank, this is used to um, automatically insert random URLs with anchor text into your articles. So in this case, you could put whatever you want. Jeez, oh, I can't type. Right here, enter some anchor texts. Uh, hello. Oops. Jeez. There's as many URLs as you want here. And then uh, once you have articles, you can right click on them and easily enter random URLs into them at any point. Um, you can select where you want them to be inserted, so at the top of the article, the bottom of the article, or someplace in the middle. And then you can import you know, URLs and anchor text right here. Language detection. All right, so this is a new feature that's really great. Um, a lot of times when you're scraping, you'll see uh, articles from different languages that you don't really want. So at scrape time, um, Expired Article Hunter will now determine what language the article is in, and you can filter by the language. So um, if you just want to check the language without filtering, you can untick that. If you tick this, then it will only show articles in the language that you've selected here. Um, we have over 82 languages right now, pretty much covers everything. If you don't see a specific language in here, it can always be added. Um, just send us a message, I have no problem doing that. But for the most part, we tried to cover, you know, all of the main languages here, so. All right, plagiarism detection. Um, we have two forms of plagiarism detection right now. One is um, a visual plagiarism detection, which I'll demonstrate later. Um, this will enable or disable that. Uh, Google search passes. This is for the automatic plagiarism detection, which searches Google for snippets. So this determines how many um, times you want to search Google for a random snippet of the article text. And it, uh, I would recommend leaving that around two or three. That way you don't have to worry about proxies or anything. Um, and there's always going to be a little bit of a delay between searches, which you can set here. Five seconds is good enough for me, and I would recommend uh, you keep it around there too. I've never had any, never had any issues with that. Um, Dom, de Dom detailer is a is a new feature we've added as well. Um, I always wanted to be able to check the metrics of the domains we're pulling in from expireddomains.net. And there's a great API that allows you to get not only majestic details, but the Moz details. Um, so you can sign up for an API key. So it's fairly cheap for the amount of checks you get. I think for $30, you get around 50,000 uh, domain checks, something like that. Don't quote me on that. Maybe it's like 20,000. I don't know. Um, but it's worth it. Um, and so right here, you could enter your, your key here. And... Uh, pull in expired domains to this section, which we'll go over in a different video. Uh, but that is where the settings for that is. So that pretty much covers all the settings. Um, if you have any questions at all, if we didn't cover anything here well enough for you, just feel free to send me an email and I'll, I'll go over it for you. All right, thank you.